we'll look into the next topic and initially we'll be looking into the hand tools we'll look into the most basic thing that you need to know and that is about the use of a ruler we call this engineer ruler Now the question is, is there any difference between the normal ruler that you use and this engineer ruler? Is there any difference? No, correct? No difference. Probably you will have some better accuracy probably with this one than compared to if you buy some ruler from popular bookstore or from Tesco or Giant. Maybe that won't give you that better reading if you use this ruler then probably you will get better reading. Now this are made using carbon steel. So an engineer's room is made from high carbon steel and the graduation will be either in SI unit or in imperial units. SI unit means the metric units. That means either in terms of mm, cm or in terms of inches and feet. Whatever you feel better to measure, you can use any of these graduations to carry out your measurement. Now, what other things you need to keep in mind? It should be free from rust, quite naturally. Now, as these are made of high carbon steel, so there is a possibility that it might get rust, isn't it? There could be corrosion and if there is corrosion in that case the engineer's rule can get damaged and in that case if you take measurement with the engineer scale probably you won't get the correct reading so make sure you take the proper care of the engineer scale and how you are going to take care of it put it in some boxes if possible make sure that it is uh, kept in place where there is no moisture Because moisture is the leading cause of corrosion and to prevent any onset of corrosion probably you need to put some layer of oil, light oil in order to prevent any onset of corrosion. So these are basically the care you need to take with the engineer's rule. The most common engineer's rule has a length of 1 feet and we can also obtain length up to 6 feet. So it all depends on your purpose quite naturally if you want to take measurement up to this much we won't be using six feet isn't it so depending on our place where we are going to use it we will be using either the one feet one or the six feet one the one feet one is the one which is uh, most commonly used and you can get engineers uh, rule up to six feet as well okay the increment or the graduation marks are etched in the root surface providing a group recess. So this is done for a purpose so that if you try to mark without the, the, the ruler having some uh, groove in it, in that case there is a possibility that your pencil, if you are using pencil or if you are using scriber, can get slip off and in order to prevent that why not to keep some groove so that it does not slip off and you get uh, the correct reading okay so we can have some reasons or some groups in order to ensure that correct reading takes place these groups enable dividers to be set to a greater accuracy as the divider point can be felt to drop in the braces here they have also mentioned the use of races in terms of the divider. If you are using divider to transfer the measurement from one point to another point. Okay, if you want to take or if you want to transfer the measurement from one point to another point, you are taking measurement here. Now this is the measurement you are hoping to cut any metal piece. Now you need to transfer this measurement from this place to the actual piece where you need to cut it according to the size now to, to transfer this measurement you are taking the divider now whenever you are taking the measurement using the divider there is a possibility that the divider might 
flatten out, isn't it? And if that happens, you won't get the correct marking in the other one. And if that is the case, you won't be able to cut it properly. So that is why grooves are there in order to ensure that you take the correct reading and the divider legs does not flatten out. Okay. Next is scriber. Now, if you're using metal piece and if you want to take measurement onto the metal piece using, like you know, the marking and all, if you do it pencil, there is a possibility that this pencil lead being made up of lead can chemically react with the metal piece. And in order to prevent that, instead of using pencil will be using scriber so in the metal piece we'll be using scriber in order to mark any points or in order to take any measurement so scribers are is used for making of marking lines on the surface of the metal scribers are made from high carbon steel so they are made using high carbon steel and they are classified by their length so you need to remember each of these points, how they are classified and what they are made up of. These are the points from where the questions are asked. Some of the most common things that you need to remember, how they are classified, each of the hand tools, how they are classified. So the scriber are classified in terms of their length. <laughs> now if I need to hold this scriber, and if I need to put the scriber in place where there is a lot of restriction, uh, in that case, if the scriber is straight, it won't be very much practically feasible for me to hold and do the marking. And that is why you have got this rectangular, sorry, uh, the 90 degree bend. Okay, so one end of the scriber is usually bent at right angle to enable lines to be scribed in difficult places such as through a pole. If in order to do marking in restricted places, like in case of the hole, you cannot use, like you know, if the, if the scriber is not bent, in that case it becomes quite difficult. So, in order to counter this problem, we are having scriber where the end is bent. Okay. All scribe lines on soft metal must only be cutting must only be cutting the boundary lines and none must be left on the surface of the metal on completion as they can cause cracks. Other lines including bend lines and lines for position of ringer must be marked with a sharp pencil. Now if you are using what it says, all scrap lines on soft metal now, if you are referring to the soft metal, that means you are referring to aluminium or magnesium. So, if you need to mark on soft metal like aluminium or magnesium, none must be left because if you are scribing something, that means you are going to cut the metal along that particular line. So, ensure, make sure that there must not be anything left on the surface of the metal on completion as they can cause cracks so cut according to the line do not leave anything okay other lines including bent lines and line for position of the rivet must be marked with sharp pencils now, whether you need to use pencils or whether you need to use scribers, these are not general statements. You need to follow whatever is mentioned in the aircraft maintenance manual. If in certain places we are not supposed to use any pencil mark, in that case you need to follow the rules. Because in most of the cases, the pencil mark can induce some hardness as well. Because the lead in the pencil can have some detrimental effect on the metal. 
So whether you are going to use scriber or whether you are going to use pencil, that will be specified. Even if you are using scriber in certain places, the scriber won't be mentioned that you cannot use scriber. And there is a reason for it because if you use scriber, the moment you are applying pressure to force the scriber along you, the, the whatever line you want to cut it, because the moment you are applying pressure to the surface with the scriber, this is some sort of a cold working as well. And it can induce stress. So whether you are going to use scriber or whether you are going to use pencil, everything will be specified. Each one has got its own objective. Each one of it has got its own advantages and disadvantages. Depending on the place you need to cut, you need to do the marking. Either you will be using pencil or you will be using scriber. Now whether you are going to use pencil or scriber, everything will be specified in the maintenance manual and you need to follow whatever is mentioned there. Okay? With the scriber it can cause cold working, with the pencil it can cause some chemical reaction as well because of the lid uh, coming in contact with the metal piece and can have some chemical reaction which can have some adverse effect on the metal piece. When not in use, because the scriber contains sharp points and if you are not using scriber, in that case, you need to ensure that the sharp points should not get damaged. And in order to prevent the sharp point from getting damaged, what we need to do, put some cover in it. Isn't it? So you need to put some cover. So what the cover is made up of? It can be made up of either some plastic, some cork, or any other similar material. It could be rubber as well. So anything which would protect the tip, because you don't want the tip to get damaged. Next is key seat rule. These are used for marking off lines parallel to the axis. As you can see here in the diagram, we have got some cylinder. And if I need to mark some line along the axis of the cylinder, in that case, a normal engineer's rule cannot be used. Isn't it? Yes or no? The engineer's rule might slip from your hand. So, we will be using this key seat rule. They are also referred to as box square. You need to remember it. The another name for key seat rule is box square. And again, they are classified in terms of their length. You need to remember it. And again, we will have marking or the graduation in it. And again, the graduation could be either in terms of inches or in terms of I, that means either in terms of imperial unit or in terms of metric unit. In the introduction class, I show you about the feet square or the p square. So we will be looking into the theoretical part. Hey. Hey. Feet square or the t square. So the feet square or the t square is used for marking or setting up 90 degree because we got this base and some length and both are 90 degree to each other. So if I need to set certain things at 90 degree to each other, in that case we can use the t square. Another name for it is the feet square. Squares are made to very fine limits. And they are made up of high carbon steel and again they are classified by the length of the blades. So you need to remember what it is made up of and how they are classified. So it is classified in terms of the length of the blade and they are made up of high carbon steel. The blade and the stock. 
So you have got two parts, the blade and the stock, the one which you will be holding against, based on which we will take the measurement, the thicker one is the stock and then the other one is the blade. So blade and stock. The blade and stock are 90 degree to each other and have their opposing edges ground truly parallel with the two limbs set at exactly 90 degree to each other. So both these are exactly 90 degree to each other and this blade or stock are parallel, the opposite phases are always parallel and they are ground in such a way that they remain parallel. So this and this are parallel, this and this are parallel, this side and this side of the stock are parallel and this side and this side are parallel and this and this are 90 degree with respect to each other. To preserve its accuracy, now again what could be the possible damage? It can get damaged because of corrosion, one problem, so you need to take care of it. It can get the corroded because of humidity, so you need to take care of it. If it is exposed to outside temperature, there could be a possible expansion. Or contraction depending on the outside temperature and it, we need to protect it from that as well while working it could drop from your hand so you need to take care of that so because these are grounded to utmost accuracy and anytime if it is corroded or if there happen to be some sort of a damage in that case, the entire tool will become useless because you cannot take any measurement with that tool if they are not 90 degree to each other and they are very accurately grounded to be 90 degree with respect to each other. And in order to preserve this property, it is essential that we put it in some boxes so that it is not getting affected by the moisture, by the outside atmospheric condition by any corrosive environment now again we need to test it for accuracy and to test it for accuracy it is held against a block which we call as the V block in the introduction class in the workshop I showed you the V block Do you remember that so it will be tested for its accuracy by resting it across and along the V block or using a master square and if you do not have V block or the master square in that case, there are other way by which you can check for its accuracy and the procedure is given in your book. So, what the procedure says, place the stock. So, stock means the thicker portion. Against the true edge of a flat surface. Place the stock against the true edge of the flat surface and scribing a line on the surface using the outside edge of the plane. So you can see in the diagram this is the true edge. So you need to put the stock, the thicker portion, against the true edge of a flat surface and then we need to scribe it against the surface. Now turn it. Now you can see that this is one, the first placement and then you turn it. So this and this you can think of as mirror image of each other. You are taking it, scribing it and then turn it. Turn the square 
over and check the outside edge of the blade against the previously scribed mark. So you can see here we are resting this T square or the fetus square against this true edge and then we are scribing against the flat blade and then we are turning it and then again scribing. Now if it is perfect in that case both this line either will be parallel to each other or will be exactly over one another and if that is not the case if you happen to get some angle between them that means there is some error okay so with this with the D square or the fetus square, we can take measurement up to 90 degree. Now, what about some other measurement, some other angle? So, for that, we use the combination set. Now, if you look at the diagram given in your book regarding the combination set, it has got a spirit level, which is part of the square head, and then something we have got called the center head, and this square head and the center head you can slide along the ruler the ruler again got the groove with the marking given now if you are using the square head in that case the square head has got only one working surface now this is the working surface now the square head has got only one working surface at 90 degree and the other at 45 degree so one at 90 degree and another at 45 degree so this 90 degree and 40 degree are with respect to this ruler so that means with this square head we can take measurement at 90 degree or at 45 degree okay Now what is the purpose of the center head? It is used to locate the center line of any bar, of any tube. So in order to locate the center line, if you got a tube or some cylindrical bar and if you want to find the center line of it, in that case we will be using the center line. Okay. And with the square head, we will be using to mark either the 90 degree or the 45 degree. It has got two working edge. One working edge is used to measure 45 degree angle and the other one is used to measure the 90 degree angle. And each of these side you can slide against the ruler and you can lock that into position and that is where you have got these screws. Because you can slide it as per our requirement and then whatever position you want, you can fix it into that position and lock it into that position and for that you have got these screws. While taking this measurement, we also need to ensure that the place where you are taking this measurement, the place itself is flat. And to check for the degree of flatness, how can we check it? By using some spirit level. So you have got some spirit level attached to the uh, square head as well. Okay. So the combination set consists of the graduated steel rule as we have seen in the diagram with the machine groove we know what is the purpose of groove in order to take measurement and transfer measurement using the divider and also to prevent whenever you are taking any measurement you don't want uh, the divider or the uh, you know whatever measuring tool you are using to slip off and for that we need to have the groove and this runs along the center line along its center line attached to the ruler are two heads one is the center head and another is the square head what is the purpose of the center head the center head is being used in order to locate the 
सेंट्रल लाइन ऑफ एनी सिलेंड्रिकल पार्क एनी ट्यूब वट इज द पर्पज ऑफ द स्क्वायर हेड स्क्वायर हेड इज यूज फॉर एनी मार्किंग एट नाइन्टी डिग्री और एट फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री इज वन वर्किंग एज एंड नाइन्टी डिग्री वन इज द अदर वर्किंग एज सो इट इज गॉट टू वर्किंग एज and then you have got the speed level in order to ensure that wherever you are taking the measurement it is flat and sometimes sometimes it comes with scriber as well because if you need to do the marking you need to have the scriber as well so sometimes this set comes with a scriber as well the protector head this is the protector head also it has got this speed level now you can see you can rotate this protector quite natural because if i require 10 degree 20 degree 30 degree i need to i need to have a condition where i can rotate the propeller because the base is the ruler which is fixed and any measurement will be taken with respect to the base So if I need to take measurement of 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, 75 degree, I need to rotate the propeller. And I must have a provision of locking the propeller, uh, sorry, protector into that position, isn't it? So again, there must be some locking provision. Now, if you are taking this measurement, the angle in a place where the place itself is not flat, in that case, you won't get the correct reading, right? so you also need to ensure that it is set perfectly parallel to the surface and flat and how to do so how to check for the degree of flatness wherever you are taking the measurement for that you have got this speed level so again a speed level is attached to the protector head in order to ensure that wherever you are taking the angular measurement it must be flat okay any doubt next is surface plates and cables again in the previous class we have seen the surface plate right you remember i showed you the surface plate with the prussian blue color with the cover so these are not quite natural i'm not measuring tools these are blocks what it is made up of gray cast iron we have got different types of cast iron we will be looking into the different types of cast iron whenever we will study about the metallurgy we have got nodular cast iron gray cast iron white cast iron spherical cast iron we have got different types of cast iron and this one is made using gray cast iron where the edges or the surface is finely machined in order to ensure the highest degree of smoothness why you need because we require very high degree of flatness because this surface plate is used to check any other surface any other thing for its flatness so if i need to take or check anything and check against this block first of all this block itself need to be flat isn't it so they are usually mounted on a bench <coughs> and it has got three supports to ensure the steadiness Why three? Why not four? Because if it is not perfectly flat, with the other one, other feet missing, we can tilt it a bit and ensure that it is become flat. Are you getting me? You got this chair. Now, if I cut this portion. in 
that case, I can always adjust, isn't it? By putting some paper or something. I can put a sprit level and see whether it is flat or not. And if it is not flat, because I got, you know, the missing plan. So there I can put whatever it is in order to ensure that this become perfectly flat. Correct? And the same logic goes here. So it has got three feet, three support. So that if there is any unevenness, if it is not perfectly flat, we can adjust and ensure that it becomes perfectly flat. Is it always three or do they have more than three? Is it always three? Uh, three. Three supports? Yes. Or We don't require more than three, but four. <laughs> Surface plates are freestanding on the workshop floor and their sheer weight provides the required steadiness. The standard of the surface fee, uh, finish varies. Now quite natural, we can have different degree of surface finish. Some some of the surface plate will have higher degree of finishing and some of the other one will have a lower degree of finishing. More expensive one will be better, yes, a cheaper one will be not that good. Now we have got grade A, grade B and grade C. Depending on how smooth and how accurate the finish is. So grade A. That is the most accurate one used for the standard rooms. Grade B in inspection areas and grade C for the normal workshop. So that means the one that we got here is grade C, the cheapest one. Yes. Good for most of the purpose. How can we define nothing is good, nothing is bad. It all depends on how far, or how better we tend to look at, isn't it? Nothing is good, nothing is bad. A is the best. Huh? A is the best. A, A, yeah. A is the best. There is nothing like good or bad, isn't it? It all depends on our point of reference. With respect to a thief, another thief is good. With respect to a police, the thief is bad. With respect to the thief, the police is bad. So it all depends how we look at the thing. Correct or not? If you don't like to study and if I and in that case if I come and talk all nonsense, in that case you will find me better. If you like to study and if I come and talk all nonsense, you will find me bad. It all depends on how you look at the thing. So, surface plates comes in three grades, grade A, grade B and grade C. Grade A is the one which is used uh, in uh, the standard rooms where you need to do the calibration and all. Grade B for normal inspection work areas where you need to do inspections and all and grade C are the normal one the cheapest one that is used in most of the workshops surface plates and tables can be used to test for flatness we know that providing the standard required and not too high the surface of the plate is slightly lightly smeared with mixture of engineers blue the Prussian blue that I showed you the other day and few drops of oil. Why need to keep the oil? Because we don't want any rust. The piece to be tested. Now, if I need to check for the degree of flatness of this one, how can I check for the degree of flatness? I know this is flat. I'm not sure whether this is flat or not. So what I can do, put some color, the engineer's blue and then rub it off against the surface and then try to slide this against the surface and then try to check for the impression 
because if the surface is perfectly flat in that case the color will be even right or else in some parts we'll have color some parts won't have color so the pins to be tested has to be rubbed lightly onto the surface plate and any high spots will show up as blue spots quite natural if the thing is not perfectly flat and is slightly high high spot the color will be attached to that high spot isn't it so that means next time what you need to do if the spot is high and you need to do some piling till you can remove all traces of the color and again check and again try to see so it is like no you need continuously need to do this filing and all and then need to monitor and check for the degree of flatness after use a light film of oil should be applied to the working surface of the surface plates and table they should then be protected with a wooden cover to prevent the onset of corrosion because these are I no, used to check for the degree of flatness and if there is corrosion in that case definitely if you want to take any measurement using that uh, surface plate you won't get the correct reading so you want to protect it you need to protect it from corrosion so put some cover so that the moisture does not react okay Next is V-blocks. So V-blocks are accurately machined six-sided rectangular blocks and again made of cast iron. So what is the purpose of it? It can be used with the surface plate it can be used on the surface plate it can be used on the table it can be used to hold some round bar pipes because we have got this type of surface so any round bar or anything you can just put it here and the round bar can rest against the surface So what for it is used to give centers and line parallel to the side of the V block and they are classified by the maximum number of work which they can hold. So you can have this small, this big, this big. So if it is bigger, quite natural, it can hold large radius, isn't it? Yes or no? If it is smaller, that means small radius. So depending on the diameter of the work it can hold, it can be classified into different types all opposite sides are parallel and all adjacent faces are square to each other the groups are cut at different depth to cater for a bar of different diameter Different bar can have different diameter in order to ensure that different bar of different diameter can be used so the groups are of different length. So, uh, of, sorry, of different depth. So you need to remember what, why for the depth of the groups are different or differing. The groups of the depth in case of the V blocks differs in order to cater for the need that we need to have different type of uh, diameter and to cater for that need we need to have groups of different depth how they are identified they are identified by the uh, size of the test piece it can hold what they are made up of they are made up of cast iron so what is the groove the groove ha it has a square cut the cut will be square it is small and the clearance groove in the bottom of the V, this ensure that any oil film or dirt. Now, we have got the V block, we put some bar, maybe do some marking to get the center line or whatever it is. Now, whatever work you are doing, so, and then also you need to put the, the lubricating oil and also, we must have 
some passage for whatever things to be drained out and for that we have got this drain points so what it says clearance groove so clearance groove means we are referring to the drain points in the bottom of the V so you need to remember what is the purpose of the uh, clearance groove this ensure that any oil dirt runs off the side of the V and does not clog to the bottom of the V causing an imperfect setting of any bar which were to be placed onto the blocks V blocks are made in matching pair this is another most important part they are always made in matching pair you need to remember it and they must always be used together the matching pair must always be used together you cannot use one from this pair and one from the other pair we need to use the same pair some V blocks also have groups machined along the other two longer parallel sides to locate specially designed clamp which can be used to securely hold work while it is being accurately marked out of drill so what it says we can have groove parallel to the side as well and in that case these groups can be used apart from providing the pathway for the lubricating oil or the sludge it can also be used to hold the work to clamp the work in place okay any doubt so far there is nothing to understand what all you need to do is remember next is surface gauge another name for it is scribing block and this is how it looks like this is the scribing block so you can see here these two V blocks so these are matched V block. They are being used to hold this cylindrical block. Now, if you need to draw a line, center line, along the length of this cylinder block, if you use your hand, quite naturally it is not possible, isn't it? Right? Can you use a normal ruler also? Cannot use, right? So we require some sort of a device which remains stationary irrespective of anything. So how this stationary, how this scriber can be made stationary and also we would require a situation where let's say I need to mark the uh, bar somewhere lower, maybe sometimes higher, maybe sometimes much higher. So that means we require a condition where we can change the position of the scriber as well. We want the scriber to be holding uh, stationary CD at the same time we need to, we should have, be in a situation where we can change the height of the scriber. So this surface gauge or the uh, scribing block whatever name you call it both are same this is basically a tool used for marking where we need to mark if you need to mark in any cylindrical block we will be using the scribing tool the scribing tool because it is a marking tool so definitely it will always be used with the scriber and sometimes with the V block if you need to hold the V block sorry if you need to hold the uh, cylindrical block with the V block in that case you also need to use the V block as well 
it is used to mark parallel line along the center line the scriber is clamped to the spindle now if you look here in the diagram this is the spindle part so the scriber is being attached to the spindle and then it is pivoted so this is pivoted pivot means just some attachment okay pivoting means just some attachment by means of some screw where you can adjust the screw because you need to adjust the height as well so by using a fine adjustment screw and it must have some base and the base must be heavy because it needs to be steady so the base is definitely heavy so it is made using cast iron or sometimes using hardened steel because it need to rest against a surface so it need to be machined very correctly it need to be grounded very correctly so uh, correct grounding and finishing is required and it is also grooved similar to the v block so that it can be used on round stock when required two friction fit pins in the base so this is the base two friction fit pin in the base may be pushed down to assist the drawing line parallel to the edge if i need to draw a line parallel to the edge if i need to draw a line parallel to the edge we don't want this thing to move so we can fit two pins which would ensure that it remain steady on to that particular level next is divider dividers are used to set out distances and also to scribe some arc some circles you have seen divider in your geometry box isn't it in your high school right not seen no. normal geometry box we have got the compass and the divider the other one with the two legs so scribers sorry uh, dividers are used to scribe the arc or the circles the legs are made up of high carbon steel and it can be sprung out or spring in so you can adjust this length and it is made using spring steel and the adjusting mechanism by which you can adjust it is made up of mild steel how they are classified they are classified by the length of their legs again because it must have or the uh, the legs of this caliper i have in sharp points i want need to protect the sharp points so we need to take care of it that the sharp points are protected sometimes we use the sharp point can get blunt and in that case we need to do some grinding in order to ensure that it is sharp again huh blunt means no oh, this is sharp if it is not sharp some flat out and blunt so with use it can get blunt you know in that case we need to sharpen it and that is done by grinding it 
We also need to ensure that the sharp points are protected so the protection will be similar to that of the protectioning system we use in case of a scribal. So use some cork or use some wood or some plastic to ensure that the sharp points are not damaged. Calipers, next is caliper. If I need to measure diameter and distance or for comparing sizes, we'll be using the caliper. So you have got different type of caliper, outside caliper, inside caliper and odd leg caliper. Outside caliper is used to measure the outside diameter. I got something if I need to measure the outside diameter, I will be using the outside caliper. If I need to measure the inside diameter, I need to use the inside caliper. So outside diameter, for to measure the outside diameter, we will be using the outside caliper and to measure the internal diameter, we will be using the inside caliper. In case of outside diameter, to measure the outside diameter, quite natural that the legs will be pushed inside, isn't it? Right? Whereas to measure the outside diameter, inside diameter, the legs will be spread outward. So the internal diameter, the legs are being spread outward, whereas in case of the outside diameter, the legs are spread inward. Odd leg caliper. Another name for it is Jenny Caliper. This tool, this is half caliper and half divider. It is used for scribing arcs on metal from the edge for scribing lines parallel to the edge of the surface and also for finding the center of the round bar so you have got a round bar if i need to find the center of the round bar we will be using the odd leg caliper if i need to scribe mark we will be using the uh, odd leg caliper so odd leg caliper it is half caliper half divider it can work as or function as caliper as well as divider okay so you can see here the diagram for the outside so you can see here in case of the outside it is the legs are spread inward in case of the inside the legs are spread outward and you can see the odd leg caliper or this jenny caliper where it looks like a divider at the same time it looks like a caliper as well it can be used to measure the arc along the edges at the same time it can also be used or act like divider to transfer measurement from one position to another position. Okay, any doubt? Next is hammer. Hammer are classified by their weight and the type of head. By the type of head implies, if you look at the diagram, we can see here we have got something like this type, this type and this type. The heads are different. So they are identified in terms of their weight and also by the type of their head. This type of head is known or called as cross pin, this is straight pin and this is ball pin. Each one has got its own purpose. Ball pin is used for a specific purpose, straight pin is used for a specific purpose, cross pin is used for a specific purpose. The handle is generally wooden handle. What wood? Ash or hickory.
how they are secured to the head by wedging that means we cut like this this shape is called wedge same like tapper okay this shape is wedge tapper tapper okay we can have parallel we can have tapper i've got a hole here if this is the wooden block make it tapper and can insert it isn't it this is wedge so we'll try to look at their use ball pin hammer it is the most general purpose used for general work while the ball pin end this end is the ball pin end it is used for riveting purpose okay any type of riveting if you need to apply force we'll be using this ball pin end this is the ball pin end this is the straight pin end and this is the cross pin straight pin all again used for general work where access is limited we do not have proper space in that case we will be using this straight pin hammer where axis is limited we will be using the straight pin hammer next is cross pin similar to the straight pin as you can see here but then this is 90 degree with respect to this one right this one is set at 90 degree with respect to the, this one yes or no So that's what it is written here the axis of the pin is at 90 degree to that of the shaft then rawhide or the copper face the rawhide facing enable heavy blow to be delivered without damaging the surface of the work while the copper face may be used for heavier type of work than height face hammer so you have got the copper face hammer and we have got the rub, uh, raw height face hammer where if you are required to apply heavy blow without any damage to the surface of the work we will be using the copper face or we will be using the raw height face with the raw height face if we require more load then that is being applied by the rawhide in that case we'll be using the copper face so with the rawhide face we, we won't be able to generate large amount of load if you require more load than that of the rawhide we'll be using the copper face next is the rubber head or the plastic head These are the newer type of copper or the rawhide. It's a newer version as mentioned in your book. So, if you require less amount of force, we'll be using the rawhide, sorry, uh, the uh, rubber or the plastic face. So, normally in aircraft, we'll be using the plastic face hammer or the rubber head hammer we generally don't use in normal maintenance work we generally don't use any of these ball pin cross pin or straight pin hammer because they are too heavy and the aircraft can get damaged so if any time you need to hammer do some hammering we'll be using either the plastic faced or we'll be using the rubber faced claw hammer probably you have seen some type of hammer where one end of the hammer is something like this got this type of shape have you seen that so that is mainly used to remove nails isn't it so that is claw hammer so used in woodworking by the carpenter there are <coughs> 
Next is the body hammer on the aircraft. They are mainly used or basically used to remove dents and blemishes from sheet metal. Another name for it is planishing hammer. Next is dead blow hammer. In case where we require a situation where the entire load need to be transferred without and all the forces need to be absorbed without any you know rebounding huh? so then we'll be using this dead blow hammer it is a hollow head which is partially filled with small ball bearing These bearings are pushed to the back of the hollow as the hammer is swung towards the component. On impact, the bearing moves in the front to absorb the inertia. So if we do not want any rebounding, we will be using this dead blow hammer. If we want the entire force to be transmitted, we will be using this dead blow hammer. So what the dead blow hammer got, if you look or if you look at the inside portion of the hammer head if you break it down you will find they are made using small balls so the movement of the the small balls in, or the ball bearing and the movement of the hammer are in opposite direction and that's how it will take or absorb any of this uh, you know rebounding effect and that's how any rebounding can be prevented if you are forcing like this the ball in the uh, in the ball bearing would be moving in the opposite direction during the impact again in the opposite direction so by this it will take all the load and absorb all the load and thereby preventing any type of rebound action The weight of the hammer required can be found with experience before use it must be ensured that the head is secured to the shaft very essential or else you will hurt yourself, you will damage aircraft. The shaft should be gripped close to the opposite end of the hand. Quite naturally you won't be holding near to the head because you require more moment arm, isn't it? That's it, and we'll stop here. We'll go to the hangar, and whatever you have seen, we'll try to do it.